Hey everybody, welcome back to Honeycomb Manila. We are here doing another segment of Exploded and Compressed. We're gonna take a coffee, do a pour over, break that pour over apart into the different seconds and uh, water contact time of that coffee and hopefully come up with a good calibration for what we are brewing. Our coffee today is from Lick El Nido. So this is a package that they sent me. I didn't buy this coffee, uh, but they sent it as a gift. They had a mini coffee festival in Palawan and I contributed as a resource and I taught advanced brewing techniques and ad advanced brewing concepts at that, uh, at that event. So I'd like to say thank you to Lick El Nido, to Sly and Autumn and all of our friends. Sly Samonte, of course, two time Philippine barista uh, champion and I think the highest the highest ranked ever in round one of a world barista championship for a Filipino um, And they sent this over they have a different retail packaging But they sent me this kind of like I guess their gift packaging It does have the stamp for lick and you can look up lick.ph on their website where they have the information about this coffee now usually you would get the information on the coffee, but because this is like a special packaging uh, I just went to the website, got the information there. Let's read a little bit about it. So this is the Millilitra Typica from the 2020 harvest. This one that we have is the Typica and here's what the bean looks like. And a Typica is a kind of Arabica. A 2020 special lot. The farm name is Millilitra. The farmer is Datu Rio Bestos. So he's a Datu, that's pretty cool. Uh, tribal farming. Village is Mirayon, a Mia Rayon. Farm elevation is at 1700 meters above sea level. Elevated drying. And that's about it. So thank you guys. This looks like a really interesting coffee. We can't wait to taste it. I do want to take a quick moment to say that one of the things that I am inspired by about this, about this coffee, about receiving this coffee, is one, it's always great to get great local coffees. Of course, the carbon footprint of, of buying a local coffee is much lower than getting one from, from around the world simply because of the travel time and because coffee is native to the Philippines. Uh, but also, I, I also want to talk about the packaging because a lot of times you get these packages and you don't think about what they're made of. But I did notice that Lick went the extra mile and got the back-to-earth biodegradable packaging. Now, paper doesn't always equal biodegradable it doesn't always equal recyclable in fact a lot of times just straight PET or HDPE uh, plastic that you get on like plastic cups are easier to recycle than paper cups so if you go to like a, a fast food restaurant they give you a paper cup but it's lined with plastic a lot of times that plastic is very difficult to recycle and is not necessarily good for the environment uh, this packaging utilizes a biodegradable plastic which exists now. For example, the, the PLA filament that we use for 3D printing here in our lab, it's biodegradable and it's made from seaweed, if I remember correctly. Uh, so it is, it's grown for that purpose. And then uh, the seaweed or algae, I can't remember, uh, also eats carbon dioxide and is actually good for the environment. You know, this is the concern is that sometimes plastic bonded onto paper doesn't always have uh, that recyclability or that biodegradability and this one does so good job like El Nido let's try your coffee all right quick refresher we're going to be brewing from one cup to the next moving it every 50 seconds and every 60 grams the reason why we do this is we're trying to figure out what flavors come out in what time in the brew process and let's go And start timer. So you might notice that this coffee is not really blooming. I'm just gonna put in all 60 grams in right away. A little over 62. That's okay. We just want to get more or less the same uh, quantity in at that time, and we can adjust in the next one. As long as we're not adding two, 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 we'll be fine. We're coming up on 50 seconds, and we'll move. 160, make sure we wet everything. All right, oh, we're low battery. Let's hope we make it through. I'm just going to start a separate timer for the right side, just in case. 
So kind of the easy way to remember this is you just minus 10 seconds every time you move it. So it becomes 50 seconds and 1 minute 40, 2 minutes 30, and moving. So I'm trying to be pretty aggressive with my pour. I'm trying to agitate it a lot and get water to move through the slurry. The grind is kind of a medium coarse grind. This grinder, the Barazza Seti 270E, kind of starts at kind of medium coarse. It doesn't really get very coarse. It also doesn't get very fine. It's kind of like a right in the, you know, it only really gets that one window of, of grind quality. Now, some people might say that that's a flaw. It might be a flaw, but I like it because it gives me a lot of control in the kind of in that little area of grind sizes that I prefer to brew in. I'm just gonna move. And then get us up to 120. So you might notice that the scale over here has already died. Oops. All right, now we're stopping at 140 seconds and taking the dripper off. So remember, you always want to remove the dripper at three minutes, 20 seconds. When you remove the dripper, put it onto another container that's empty so that you get kind of, if you want to taste the ones that, that come out after the three minute, 20 mark, then you can, you can experiment with that. All right, so we have our coffees. Sweet on the nose, cup one. Sweet banana, some jackfruit, lots of jackfruit, cup number two. Some milky texture and like a now this one has a butterscotch taste. Buttery. A buttery creamy but has that oiliness that butterscotch has. All right, cup number three. All right, the coffee's opening up. This is quite floral. I would say that, yeah, very much fl floral. There's a bouquet. In this third cup, that's very delicious. Then the fourth cup, there is no fruit in this fourth cup. There is some cocoa, chocolate in it, an unsweetened cocoa. Unsweetened cocoa, no fruit. Completely floral. Butterscotch and butter. And then all the fruit, banana langka, here in the front. So banana langka, butterscotch, floral, and cocoa. Huh, that's super interesting. Super interesting dessert. Uh, let's try brewing them all together. Because I think that this would all be really good because there, there's no bitterness or astringency, no over extraction tasted in the entire brew. I'm going to try and taste what went down in this Kalita over here. Okay, there's almost nothing there. <laughs> There's almost nothing there. There is some some floral stuff coming back, herbal, menthol stuff coming back, but I'm, I don't feel excited about what's in here. I think that this is definitely the place that we want to play in, but I think what we'll do is we'll put a lot of the uh, first pour together in the beginning. So maybe just a very small bloom, although this coffee didn't bloom. I'm going to say we're just going to go ahead and put 100... 20 ml in there, wait, and then brew another 120 ml after the 
1 minute 20 mark. So let's give it a shot. All right, so based on our learnings from our exploded method, so what I wanna do is I wanna shift three fourths of our water into that first half of the brew time and then wait and then do the last 25% in the succeeding seconds. So coffee in, 16 grams, let's get to brewing. So again, what I usually say is bloom a coffee if it blooms. I don't see this coffee blooming, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put a lot of water in until we get to 120. Now remember, I got all of that fruit flavor in the beginning of the brew, so that's what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to get all as much water into the coffee during this section of the brew to give me more of a fruity, you know, to get that jackfruit, get that banana flavor out now. I did like the butterscotch in the second cup, but I didn't find that that was kind of a necessary flavor or it was not the most desirable of the flavors that I got there. So we're gonna do that, let this draw down when this gets to one minute 40, then we're gonna put the rest of the, uh, put the, rest of the water. Coming up in 40 seconds and now I'm gonna do another circle pour, disrupt my coffee. I want as much of that coffee in the slurry as possible. going up to 240 ml and stop I do a lot of, I do want a lot of water in there with the coffee as it draws down because what we notice is that a lot of those floral notes are coming out when there's lots of water moving through the coffee <laughs> All right, so our, we're, in our, we're in our drawdown now. Now what I do during this section of the brew process is that I always watch. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for where particles are moving. I'm looking for where bubbles are moving inside the cone. A lot of brew methods concentrate only on when you're putting water in and where and uh, timing. But you also, I think, when you're thinking about flow dynamics, looking at where water is passing inside of the cone as it draws down. Okay. Four minutes and 20 seconds. All right, so we brewed our espresso, 42 seconds, uh, 42 grams out, 18 grams in, and 52 seconds, which is exactly like the Strata. Uh, it's also brewing at the same uh, barometric pressure as the Strata. Uh, we can do more fancy things, but we just want to keep everything steady for the for science. All right, so always give your espresso a little bit of a swirl. Uh, you might also notice that there's not a lot of crema on this coffee. Uh, that's kind of the way that we like to do it now. It's a kind of modern espresso. And you find that it tastes really good this way. All right, so let's sip it. Give it a sniff. There's a lot more baker's chocolate up front here. Then as the coffee moves from front to back of your mouth, uh, the, the acidity kicks in from the fruits and the fermented flavors that we were getting. That jackfruit, which is very much close to a fermented flavor. And then floral notes at the end. Super interesting. All the same notes, but kind of in a different order. So an interesting flavor that I'm getting now here, which I wasn't getting during the explosion, is kind of a ginger-like flavor, which is I'm thinking is coming from the interaction between the acidity in cup one from earlier on and the floral from cup three. And because we were tasting them separate before, we didn't have kind of the, the collaboration of taste notes that we're getting here. And it's resulting in this interesting ginger flavor. 
nice raw ginger. Super interesting, but not present in the espresso. Gosh, Philippine coffees. Philippine coffees really have been coming a long way in the last few years, I tell you. This coffee is delicious. It's not perfect. It's not perfect. But there are clear taste notes that I'm getting from each of them. None of them taste like those traditional um, like deep chocolate notes that you get from coffee. It, you're not tasting any chemical oiliness, no rubber flavors in either of these coffees, but they are exotic. I think that all of those flavors are somewhat exotic. You have ginger and banana, jackfruit, and then I don't know if you can still consider like cocoa to be exotic given that it's just so pervasive around the world and it's what they call that a commodity but as a whole those are all beautiful tropical fruits in this milliliter heirloom from Lick El Nido. All right, thank you once again. I wish you good luck. I wish you good health. I wish you great coffee. And if you need to go outside, make sure you wash your hands and wear a mask. Peace.